it's me, Haley. Have you ever wanted to be famous? Like maybe the lead singer of a rock band? Hello, Cleveland! Woo! Or maybe you fancy yourself the lead guitarist. Can you picture it? A huge crowd of people watching you, cheering for you, chanting, Hey Lee, hey Lee, hey Lee. Or you know, whatever your name is. That, that would be amazing. But you know what? Most bands don't start off on top like that. Most bands start off in some where they practice playing music and they show lots of cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Every member of a band plays an important part. Take one instrument away and it just won't sound the same. But you know who I think deserves a little more credit in a rock band? The drummer! Think about it. Hey, Warren. The drummer supports the whole band. Without a drummer, who would keep the beat? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Warren. But with a good drummer, the, the, the band stays in rhythm. Drummers may not be the most famous, but they get to decide how fast or how slow the songs are. Plus, a drummer can make every joke just a little bit funnier. The drummer works together with the band to help support the singer. This gives a, a new meaning to the word. Band-Aid. <laughs> do, do, do you get it? In today's story, we'll learn about a great battle fought by the Israelites. A battle that took all kinds of cooperation. They really had to <laughs> band together. <laughs> I'll see you in a few. <laughs> Thank you, Oklahoma City! Yeah! Woo! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 8 through 13. God had freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and led them into the desert. But with no home of their own, the Israelites were still wide open to enemy attack as they traveled. One evening, as Moses walked through the camp, his assistant Joshua raced up. Amalekites! Where? How many? Just a few men right now. They attacked at the rear, where many of the women and children are. But we beat them back. Uh, they'll come in full force tomorrow. Moses turned to survey the land around them in the last rays of the setting sun. The whole valley of Rephidim spread out before them. Nearby, a high hill provided a lookout for the whole countryside. We have no army. We'll have to fight. You choose our best men and get ready for battle in the morning. Will you come with us? No. Moses pointed at the hilltop. I'll climb up there and hold up the walking stick that God gave me. Both men looked at a sturdy staff in Moses' hand. It was no ordinary stick. Moses had lifted the staff when God had parted the water of the Red Sea so the Israelites could escape. Yes, sir. I'll call the men. In the great chill before dawn, Joshua and his group of inexperienced fighters prepared for battle against the Amalekites. I... I've never held a sword. God has saved us many times. He can do it again. As the ragtag army gathered at one end of the valley, Moses climbed the hill with his brother Aaron and his friend Hur. So, Moses, uh, what's the plan? Yeah, those Amalekites got some mean fighters. We'll call on God. As the three men crested the hill, they turned to look back. The rising sun flooded the valley. They could see Joshua and the Israelites just below. At the far end of the valley, a vast swarm of Amalekites rushed forward. Oh, more Amalekites than bees in a hive. Within minutes, the two groups clashed. It was clear from the very beginning that the Amalekites had the upper hand. They'll wipe us out in no time. Wait. At the very crest of the hill, Moses grabbed his staff and raised both hands high in the air. 
Our god is stronger than any enemy. In a short time, the tide seemed to turn. Well, what do you know? Joshua's pushing them back. The Israelites steadily beat back the Amalekite army. But as the sun rose and the heat increased, Moses' arms grew tired. Little by little, his arms sank down. Uh-oh. The Amalekites have busted through our line right there. We were doing so well. God, help us. With an effort, Moses lifted his hands high again. Joshua had formed a strong band of fighters, and once again, the Israelites surged forward. Moses lowered his arms to stretch. Ah, my back! Well, what just happened? Joshua had them. Moses stepped forward to see, raising his hands high again. Aaron turned to stare at his brother. It's your hands! When your hands are raised up toward God, we're winning! Yeah, and when you drop them, those fool Amalekites start to win! Yes, but I can't do this all day! Moses' arms began to shake. Hold it one more minute. I got a rock-solid plan. Aaron? Together, Aaron and her rolled a huge stone to the place where Moses stood. Now, you set yourself right down, Mo. Carefully, Moses lowered himself onto the rock, fighting to keep his hands high in the air. My arms! We got it, brother! Aaron and her each stood on one side of Moses and held up a hand. Whew! For the rest of the day, Aaron and her stood right beside Moses, keeping his hands steady. By sunset, Joshua and the Israelites completely defeated the Amalekites. <laughs> Look at him run! The Amalekites had been defeated by God's power. But it was only by working together with his friends that Moses had been able to keep his hands lifted high all day. The battle against the Amalekites took loads of cooperation. Aaron and Hur worked together to help Moses. The three of them worked together to help Joshua and the Israelites. And God worked with all of them to do something miraculous. What's cool is that None of those people did what they did to make themselves famous. They were each trying to help someone else succeed. That's something you can do too. You can work together, not because it makes you look good, but because it helps someone else. After all, life isn't always all about you. You could work with a friend on their homework, even when it's not your grade. You could help your brother or sister clean up their room, even though you didn't make the mess. If a friend is involved in a sport that you don't play, you can help make signs or posters to cheer them on. Jesus once said, in everything, do to others what you would want them to do to you. In other words, you should treat others the way you want to be treated. Here's one way you can do that today. Work together to help someone succeed. Working together for unselfish reasons is a great way to show someone you love them. What are you waiting for? Go get the band together and hop on the cooperation bandwagon. <laughs> and I don't miss a, a beat. <laughs> it's a time to face the music. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, 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 see if you can drum up some support. No, no, drum up, drum up some, some support. Okay, no support for that one. Thanks, Warren. I'll see you next time. <laughs>